evening everybody and uh, another episode of Mitch the Cabbie talking to you uh, during the coronavirus thing. Um, I'm currently on a job at the moment which is at the moment a very rare thing heading out to pick some customers up in Tottenham. Very busy on the roads considering it's half ten at night now and there are cars everywhere so people are obviously not self-isolating as much as you'd think. Um, been an interesting day. I went out shopping today and I went to two supermarkets to get most of what is on our weekly shopping list. Couldn't get potatoes, only by the skin of my teeth got milk. Eggs, phew. unless you had a chicken you're kind of out of luck there. Um, spooky actually, freezer aisles empty of food, bread aisle empty of bread, biscuit aisle empty of biscuits, you know empty aisle after empty aisle and people moving about with a slightly manic stare in their eyes or look in their eyes it's um, a distinctly disturbing experience anyway I managed to get most of what we needed together and touch wood Lisa and I are fairly secure for the time being food wise money wise not so sure I mean uh, <laughs> thanks inland revenue my tax bill arrived today you won't be getting that anytime soon so they're clearly doing all they can to help the small trader. Um, been a day of rumours too. Uh, woke up this morning to videos on WhatsApp of tanks being taken into London. And rumours of a lockdown coming in and soldiers being mobilised. Which I kind of expect that to be the case really. It's, it would surprise me if that wasn't. Um, a few videos of people acting very badly in supermarkets, uh, one from Leon C where people were helping themselves to shopping and were caught in the car park and the staff took all their shopping back which fair play as well. Uh, more disturbingly as well is videos of people profiteering, it's nearly always little, little corner shops um, where some guy is selling hand cream for 20 quid or hand cleaner for 20 quid or loo rolls for 12 quid and you know the excuses I get, such, I, I hear on there, such as, "Oh, that's what the wholesale selling them at," or you know, "This is what demand or what we have to pay for them." Yeah, right. No, that's profiteering, and any shop doing that, any small business taking the Mickey and profiteering like that, I sincerely hope that all the people local to them know that, remember it, and never use them again. They deserve to be out of business. They are profiting by other people's misery and fear that's a despicable act so as for the death toll and what Boris is doing well the death toll's crawling up and I suspect it's going to keep crawling up it looks to be basically every day's increase seems to double from the day before according to uh, the meters.com website very worrying that um, and no sign, in, no sign of it stopping yet I don't think it will for ages. Uh, I watched the Boris Johnson uh, televised thing and props to the guy. He's listening to the experts. He seems to be doing what is right and doing what he feel, feels is best. And hopefully it will work. It's, he, he said today that he thinks that we'll be on top of this in 12 weeks. And I'm inclined to agree that, yeah, by then, we should have some sort of solution worked out, if not for that exact moment, certainly sometime shortly afterwards. The big question is how many people will die in those 12 weeks? What's the economy doing as well? Because the Bank of England's cut the base rate to 0%, which they've not done in 300 odd years. And the pound has tanked, they're, they're printing something like 200 billion more banknotes, quantitative easing. Yep, so we are in for the mother of all recessions which is kind of scary and I suspect this might snowball if small businesses start tumbling and then bigger businesses start tumbling there's going to be a lot of unemployed people making demands on the state there's going to be a loss of gross uh, gross domestic product and the country is going to take a long time to recover from this and this brings me to the final point in my little speech today uh, who's going to pay and I was, I was reading an article, uh, I saw an article by Nigel Farage where he, he pointed out that this really is China's fault. No, if not by design, certainly by accident they've caused this. Uh, it's kind of hard to deny that, they really have. I mean, you know, 
they eat pretty much anything that moves and their open food markets like the one at Wuhan are despicable places you see dogs you see rabbits you see snakes you see all sorts of life like in there like bats you know if it, if it moves crawls walks or, or squeaks there's a Chinaman looking to eat it and um, yeah the Chinese have shut those down and apparently so has Vietnam which is all good but this isn't exactly the first time that they've done it is it SARS swine flu now now COVID-19 uh, you know they've caused this they've brought this upon the world they, they suppressed the truth of it back in November when they first found out they even sent people to prison for trying to blow the whistle on it they allowed people to travel around the world with the virus knowing they were going to spread it and yeah okay they've done great things now to bring it under control they've, they've sacrificed and managed by force of a an awful lot of brutality to bring this thing very much in at least for the moment to a point where it's not proving to be any more threat to them you know they've, they've stopped it spread in China and eventually the people over there if they maintain it long enough will all be cured of course the real danger is of course when they release the um, quarantine that they've put on things it's going to just flare right back up again and you'll end up with Covid version 2 roaring around China killing people something to look forward to I guess but no the long and the short is China has caused this they're blaming everybody else now I mean uh, apparently they're saying American soldiers caused this and whatever and yeah realistically they kind of hold responsibility for this and I feel it wouldn't be actually that unfair to demand that after this is all sorted over, out and cleaned up that they pay reparations to all the countries that have basically been ruined and lost thousands of people over this they won't of course you won't get a bent penny out of them you won't even get a sorry they'll just carry on as before but hey the fault's there they should and i was watching um a press thing today with president trump in america and he was talking about the well he was being pulled up by a member of the press about this being calling this a chinese flu uh, apparently it's racist to say that but is it I don't think it is I mean you know it came from China you've got German flu uh, German measles you've got Spanish flu why can't this be Chinese flu what's what's so special about that it's just a bit of the race car being played if you ask me anyway I'm going to pick a fare up so it's like a mask up God, this thing's uncomfortable There you go. This is going to protect me from all the horrible germs in the air. Woo! <laughs> and of course, my famous windbreaker gloves to keep me uh, from touching things. <laughs> anyway, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out.